So to start an IV, I usually get all of my things together. We have three different kinds here. This is what they use at HMC, but I'm going to show you uh, all three because we have all three types and they're all different. This is the newest one. I'll open those out so you can see. And those are all a little different as well. So this is the newest one. This is the model prior to this one. This is the oldest model. This, however, you might still see because they're still floating around, probably because they haven't expired yet. So what I do is I get all my things ready. I'll open all these packages. I suggest you have a trash can close by to you so you can rid of, get rid of all the trash that you don't need so it's not in your workspace. Okay, and I take this is my IV extension set. This is preferably what you're going to use at the hospital. They do have the hub where it doesn't have the extension set, but this is preferable so it doesn't get snagged easily. So it will be sterile when you get it out of the package, but we'll keep it there. And I'm going to take my flush, get out of the package. If you see here, there's a little bit of air at the top there, so you want to get rid of that. So you can loosen this up and push out the air so you don't squirt all over the patient. Then you can tighten it. I'm going to open this package because I didn't touch that. I can connect this directly and get my line ready. So you'll flush this to make sure you don't have any air in there. And you'll see a little bit of dripping. That's good enough. Okay, put that there. And we'll get this ready. I'm ready to do my procedure. Joe. Make sure your hands are dry because otherwise it's going to be difficult to put your gloves on. Okay. So I'm going to show you how to use this one first because this is the one that we have at HMC. This is different because you'll see that little button there and it also has a little butterfly. This one doesn't have a button, but you'll see that there's a little white inside and I'll show you how to use that. This is the oldest model you might see. This is a pediatric needle, so you'll see that it's really short. This doesn't have a white button inside, and also it doesn't have that tab, but it does have the little flange there. Okay. All right, after I put my gloves on, I'm going to find the patient's vein. When you're starting an IV, it's best to put yourself in a comfortable position and also the patient's arm so they're not holding it up. Make sure that they're stable on the bed or whatever surface. And I'm going to take my tourniquet. I'll show you how to put this on. When you find the vein, what you want to do, what if it's here or here, you want to put your tourniquet just above. I'm going to wrap it around the patient's arm, tighten this part, pull this tight, go across, tuck underneath, and pull, and then you've got that pretty tight. All right, so I'm going to go for this vein here. Put this away for a minute. Okay. Take this and put this closer. So I'm going to take my alcohol. What you're going to have in the hospital, though, are the rubs. These are the older ones. Okay, so I'm going to go for that one. All right, so scrub and then go around. Give it a few seconds to dry. Then I'm going to take my needle. You want the bevel to be up. 
want the bevel to be up. If you're not sure if the bevel is up, just look for the button because that button should be on top. Okay, so I know where I'm gonna go. So we just angle it just a bit, about 20, 25 degrees. Find the vein when you find it, stab in. Then what you'll see is you'll see that flash there. When you see a flash, keep your finger stable on this one because this is going to have the needle and you don't want to move the needle anymore. Because when you advance this further, you could go right through the vein, especially for patients who have very small veins. So what I'm going to do, see this little flange here? That's what I'm going to do to push that. So this I'm keeping stable while I'm pushing with my finger. If that's hard for you, you can also use this technique. Take this and push forward. Okay, I still haven't moved this. Now I'm going to take my tourniquet. Make sure that's loose. Now what you want to do is find that tip of this catheter. Use this finger, push on there. Okay, and then these two fingers I'm going to use to hold that in place. And when that's stable, now I can push the button. This one's leaking a lot. Usually it doesn't do that, but wow. Okay. So wow, this one looks like an artery. Okay. So I'm going to take that off. I didn't touch that. I'm using this to keep that stable. So I'm going to get that. This patient must be in a blood thinner. Alright. Get rid of that in the trash. If I had a little bit more gauze, I'd clean that up a bit. Okay. Now, you don't want to let go of this. Make sure that that's stable. It's kind of wet. So I'm just going to... That way my opposite will... Now, what we're going to do is take our op site, put it on top. Great. So at least that's stable now. Now we're going to flush. I'm going to flush half. Okay, looks okay. I'm flushing it easily. There's no bubbling or anything or swelling on there now. You're going to take this. You want to save this part here because you want to you want to label this. Okay. Now, let me take this tape. Split this. Go underneath. That's going to fold it in place. Take this part, wrap around. Okay. Well, that's stable. So even if you tug on it, it should be okay. And you're going to take the rest of this flush, going to hold onto the clamp here. Okay. As I'm pushing this forward, I'm going to flush forward. You're going to write about two cc's. You want to flush forward and clamp at the same time. This is going to prevent backup into your catheter hub. Now the rest of it I'm going to take. So you want to make sure that this is secure. So if you see any IV that's not secure like this, then you need to tape it. This is easy, easily snagged on things. Wrap it around and there you are.